This episode of G News is brought to you by Lucy, starring Scarlett Johansson. The word genius is thrown around a lot these days at computer stores, online, and in the news, and even just slang around town. But what is a genius, and what does it have to do with your brain? Howdy, Smarty Pants. Trace here for D News. The plot of the new science fiction flick, Lucy, explores what would happen if a human suddenly had a better brain. What if we remembered everything? We made connections faster. We could use that knowledge instantly and put it to use in our bodies. What would that mean? Would they be a genius? Maybe. Depends. The dictionary defines genius as a person who is exceptionally intelligent or creative, either generally or in some particular respect, which is a pretty broad definition, actually. Scientists and philosophers have argued for centuries about the source of genius in humanity. Einstein was a genius, sure. Stephen Hawking is a genius. Was Goethe? Steve Jobs, Thomas Jefferson, Mao Zedong, Da Vinci? Genius isn't really a solid measure. A lot of people's first step in defining genius hits on IQ, but an intelligence quotient doesn't measure genius, but rather how children might perform in school. Not to mention the tests are hotly debated and probably flawed. Doing well in school doesn't mean genius either, as many who deserve the name found their callings outside of the schoolhouse. Genius is measured subjectively. We call people geniuses because they push humanity and they accomplish great things, but determining who is going to accomplish great feats of intelligence is nearly impossible before they actually do it. Both nature and nurture play huge roles in what we will achieve in our lives. Looking just at the physical brain, it's impossible to tell who was a genius and who was completely average. There are way too many factors to consider. Science has no clue where genius actually comes from in the brain. To learn more about how to understand human capacity for exceptional intelligence, scientists are studying the psychology of learning and the physical structures of the brain. For example, according to a 2004 UC Irvine study, more gray matter spread throughout the brain correlates to higher levels of intelligence as well, though they were using IQ tests to measure that. More directly, scientists are studying Einstein's actual brain to see if they can figure out what made him so darn smart. Scientists have learned his parietal lobe responsible for spatial reasoning, math, and three-dimensional understanding was 15% larger than the average brains, and that his two hemispheres shared more connections than the average brain did also, perhaps allowing him to think faster and maybe better. But even this is all still kind of theoretical. Currently, psychologists believe genius may be more accurately measured by Howard Gardner's theory of multiple intelligences. As the name suggests, Gardner hypothesizes humans can be smart in many areas, linguistics, logic, or music, among others. Tests can be used to measure these multiple intelligences, and those who score highly in many areas might indicate a genius, but again, they're based on standardized tests, so you probably see the problem here. In the end, genius is sort of like a you-know-it-when-you-see-it thing, more than a specifically definite scientific principle. But we do know some of the characteristics of past geniuses. A book entitled Genius 101, Creators, Leaders, and Prodigies says geniuses are, in general, open to experience, introverted, hostile, driven, and ambitious. They also appear to be creative and often have trouble socially. As of now, movies like Lucy, where superhuman intelligence is thrust on an average person, are firmly fictional, simply because we wouldn't even know what to grow or which switches to flip up there. Your guess is as good as mine, so tell me down below in the comments and check out Scarlett Johansson in Lucy on July 25th. Let us know what you think of the film, too, if you've seen it. Thanks for watching D News. See you later.